Hello, and welcome to Change the Face of Yoga, teaching toddlers through golden oldies. I'm very excited to be talking to lots of yoga teachers who will explain their passion for teaching yoga to students with different ages, physical fitness levels, wellness levels, and different goals. They will explain the benefits of yoga for these students and will be including teacher tips and pose modifications. I am Stephanie Cunningham of Yoga Lightness, and I've been teaching over 50s for 10 years. So this area is my passion and the passion of many other yoga teachers that you will be listening to in this series. Thank you so much for listening, and let's get started. This is Changing the Face of Yoga, and this is episode 126. And my guest today is Lisa Holland. This is part of the the theme of support for yoga teachers, yoga therapists. And Lisa is very experienced having worked within the medical field as a physical therapist. And she has some ideas about working in that field and what, so it's just how you position yourself in this area. So welcome, Lisa. I'm really excited about this particular interview because I I think it's it's quite unique. Could you just give us a short bio that will kind of introduce you to the listeners? Yeah, sure. Thank you, Stephanie, so much for having this theme. Um, I think it's important that we we start thinking about, you know, yeah, we, it, you want to have sustainable business if you want to help people. You know, you got to you gotta make mm-hmm. sure you stay in business. Um, but um, I, as you said, I'm a, I'm a doctor of physical therapy. I've been practicing physical therapy. I, I don't do as much clinically now because I've really moved into some mentorship and some of these business conversations for my peers that are uh, in, in medicine and rehab medicine and uh, also for yoga, physio yogis that are kind of the bridge builders. I tend to work with people who kind of walk both line, you know, walk that fine line with one foot on each side, because that's where I came from. I've been a physio yogi. I really had my first class really dipping my feet into it about 2000, 2001. And then I created my company, Belly Guru LLC in 2005. And I did that as a model that, you know, it was one of the first medpreneur type of health entrepreneur, boutique, clinical slash wellness center, well-positioned, direct to market. I did not take any insurances. I did not step into that. I, I, I was leaving that uh, for very important reasons. Number one, they weren't accepting of yoga back then. That was 2005. And I really had seen that as uh, a very helpful therapeutic modality. And it aligned with what I had done in orthopedics and sports medicine prior to my move to women's health, which was uh, in that realm, you were really working a mind-body thing. You, you, you knew that they needed to keep their head in the game, and you saw the detriments of that in their phys- – no matter how physically able they were, put together, fixed up, patched up, if their head was out of the game, if they were feeling injured mentally, you saw that performance. And then I went over into mainstream you know, rehabilitation medicine. Medicine, and that was like, oh, forget about it. You know, like, you know, it's, it's as if they were too, you know, it was every body part, every body part, every body's part for themselves and every person's discipline for themselves. And, and it did not overlap. So my make migration of, of over into yoga as my main modality uh, for restoration started out physical in as much as, you know, I think every physical therapist that, you know, goes into that much more than let's say the psychologists that go into that, they go a lot more mind approach, but my approach was always very holistic, was very always mind and body, and it really gave me a vehicle. And so I evolved in that. I naturally became a mentor for other people doing that. They were asking me questions. So I decided, hey, if they're going to ask me some questions and I'm not going to be seeing people and I'm talking on all these Facebook pages and giving advice, I need to start, you know, uh, getting supported for that because I actually really liked it and I knew a lot of stuff and I could save them years. I mean, pretty much right now, I have a five-day Excel accelerator that you know took me 16 years to learn you could do it in five days so I'm I'm trying my best to um, 
brought in uh, the physical therapist's minds, but they're very, you know, they have a lot of legalities and things, and, and there's a lot of fear in that mentality. I think the yoga teachers and yoga therapists could really learn from their mistakes. And one of the big things I see right now in having been one of these bridge builders uh, in the International Association of Yoga Therapists trying to bring a conversation for that line of health providers that don't necessarily want to hang up their, you know, clinical to become, you know, a yoga therapist or a yo full-time yoga therapist or a yoga teacher. They actually want to combine it. But what I saw is that we're, we're kind of walking down the line here in yoga therapy. Number one, calling ourselves yoga therapists when we can actually, can really fit into the market, positioning ourselves in a little different way. And so uh, I've been out there having that conversation. I uh, now have an integrative uh, I actually, even more than a health coach, which is what I was trying to bring in, when I went into health coaching, I really saw that was actually still a very clinical conversation. And more of what I do is what I was taught in yoga, very traditional Raja, Hatha, um, you know, the holy science of yoga is I change, I help people change their lives. I'm a life coach. And uh, I, I do that in various leans towards, you know, more rehabilitation versus um, personal development, depending on the person. But when you're dealing with chronic pain, and you're dealing with women's health, which are two areas uh, where I tend to work in nowadays, or, you know, since I moved into women's health in general, those two conversations, long term, you know, hormonal imbalances, stress induced things, that realm that yoga is in right now to be a very big help in their community is actually needing to make sure they have behavioral change, not just doing these modalities. It actually is about behavioral change. So I'm having that conversation. And I assume that's, you know, some of the conversation we had from in the last podcast that you so nicely had me on. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that's really where I'm at. My, my Mind Body Brand Academy is helping people such as yourself and anyone else to, to literally have a personal brand that they can transport as they evolve into their professional way they want to evolve. And then, like I said, I, I, I am I'm actually starting to certify people in these abilities to read other people with some uh, psychosocial assessments. We all start talking about the biopsychosocial and how yoga is so great on the biopsychosocial, but you cannot come in mainstream and start talking chakras, okay? <laughs> you can't. You're not going to be able to talk to a visit. You can't go into healthcare. And yoga therapy wants to so much be in healthcare. You know, they have some schools that are putting them in white coats and in a hospital. But um, the problem is, is that uh, you can't you can't go into that. The, our psychosocial and yoga, our the Ayurvedic method and, and whatnot, is such that it is something that they don't have in the Western model. They don't necessarily have that conversation. So we need to enter in in their conversation. And that's behavioral change. And that's life coaching and, and, and health coaching to some extent, uh, well-being and all of that conversation. But it's not necessarily, we're all, you know, health coaching right now is about learning. You have to become a, mind, a, a ninja about the gut microbiome. <laughs> but we're not going to have a bunch of, you know, yogis doing that. Um, you can, but I think really what's natural within the practice itself is that aspect of, of helping people see themselves of today as they truly are, um, not focus so much like therapy does in the past and, and focusing on the problem and how you got hurt and what's going to change from yesterday and going back to that trauma over and over and over to work it out. We need to focus on the today and let them see the person of tomorrow because a lot of times we know when they come to the mat, they don't see that yet. It's too big of a gap. And that bridge building right there, honestly, is a lot more that I do of life coaching than just health and wellness coaching. It's a lot of the yoga off the mat. And okay. I think we can position ourselves there. Let's just talk real basics. You've kind of evolved since the last time we talked because you were talking about mm -hmm. health coaching. But now you've kind of evolved into more of a, of a life coaching. So what would you say are the major differences between being in a clinical position, whether it's physiotherapy or it's yoga therapy or whatever, therapeutic as versus a life coach? Well, I think probably what you heard is I, I, I feel I am a health coach. I just feel like, you know, um, they're, not, they're not really two different things. It's just my definition of health and well-being uh, involves your life. 
And uh, you really can't split it up just like you can't split up the mind and the body. You're only going to get a piece and you can't get behavioral change unless you change what's going on with someone's perception of themselves and their life because you can't get them eating organic and vegan if at home that's going to be a really big problem no matter how much they believe you. So the real differences I see between health and life coaching is, is again, the, the clinical concentration. While, life, while health coaching will bring in behavioral change, you are through the process um, because of their desire to work in a very allopathic still model. Um, you will uh, see somewhat of a diagnostic needing uh, some sort of a, a procedure for certain diagnostics, lots of testing, um, a lot of focus on the gut microbiome and digestion and assimilation there. They do talk about stress, but a lot of stuff will end up working in diet. And so it looks a lot like Ayurveda consultants. I think we have that already, right? We have Ayurvedic consultants. We have Ayurvedic physicians. We have Ayurvedic practitioners. Those aren't necessarily always uh, yoga therapists or therapists in general or, or life coaches. Taking somebody and telling them what to do for a certain pathology is very different than actually walking them through change. And so the life coaching side in the conversation is how do I actually deal with change? That's not necessarily what do I do to my body or my diet or my sleeping. How do I actually deal with change? I would assume, though, that any clinical intervention assumes that you're going to change. <laughs> you're going to do some more stuff, or you're going to do less stuff, or you're going to do different stuff, but you're going to change. So is it just that the clinical is very focused on a specific thing, whereas the, the coaching is more holistic? Uh, clinic, clinical work or therapy work is focused on fixing something a healing per se. Coaching is focusing on process. And the real difference is that in a therapy, both of them will be healing, okay? Both of them will be change. And, and yes, I agree. It's, it's assumed, but that doesn't mean you can do it. Because we all know with the science right now, we sometimes have literal changes in our biochemistry and our brain chemistry that have been caused by repetitive traumas or we have, you know, we have injuries and, and processes that are not working anymore in the gut microbiome or we, we have, uh, you know, we really literally need to change the biochemistry again. So as much as we might want to, sometimes we need to be coached through that. In a coaching relationship, it's who's in charge versus a therapy relationship. Therapy is about me being the expert and me taking all of that evidence-based medicine and me knowing a protocol and me figuring out what you need and then pulling down that protocol and sort of adapting it to you. And that is me in charge of, of, of the game, really. Even if I say client-centered, it's not like I'm sitting there and I'm, and I'm like, okay, so we can do, and some people do, and they try to expand it, and they try to have more of a, of a, of a client-centered approach, and they say, well, there's this test and this test, which one do you want to do? In a coaching relationship, you really are not one in charge. You're, you're, you're there to be a witness and a guide to their process. You say you are the healer. I am not the healer. You are the healer. I just know stuff to maybe make that process a little easier to digest. And I might be able to give you some resources, but I'm not even necessarily being the educator. A lot of therapy is educating people. A lot of therapy is treating them, doing things passively to them or setting things up. A lot of coaching is uh, holding up a mirror and, and asking them to see the truth in the matter and then creating a, a safe environment for them to do that, to, to self-reflect and to get their own answers. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest change between yeah. therapy and coaching. What are the benefits of therapy? And then what are the benefits of coaching to the client? Great question. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, the benefits of therapy are that the best thing would be if you had skills in both. 
and could sort of walk between it because there's always this Pandora's box if you're being really creative, right? And, and being very effective. And there are times when it becomes a need for a therapeutic alliance. And there are times when it needs to uh, maybe be moved over to a more autonomous coaching alliance. The benefits of, of, of therapy are that there are things like I can't do for myself. There are, there are things I don't know. I can be a little bit more passive. I could, I could give over a little bit of, of, of needing to take the lead when I'm very stressed on something to someone I trust, like, and know. The coaching is actually much harder. <laughs> coaching, coaching is something, which is why there's not a lot of people that can sell it well. Because you are, and you need to have a person at a level of readiness for change that they may not be at. Whereas therapy, I can literally have you there passively knocked out and I could probably range your leg or I could have you literally on your deathbed and help you in some way feel less pain or strain or stress and, and it take you through my process and, and that might be very helpful for you. But if I'm working towards being autonomous, if I'm truly sitting there saying, why can't this person have compliance? Why don't they have self-efficacy? It's very hard in a therapeutic alliance to say, here, I'm the expert, I know this, do this, and then sit there and say, why isn't this person independently making their own decisions to heal their own life? It's a, it's a, it's a different mindset, whereas in the, 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 the benefit of coaching is that that's the relationship right off the bat. The person's coming in understanding this is going to be more of their work than my work. So let's take it the other way. What are the benefits of both of these mo these, uh, the coaching and the therapy for the, the therapist? Why would they change from being a therapist to a coach? They would change when they see the limitations of therapy. Therapy can only take the person so far, or at least that's my belief, in terms of really truly taking self-ownership of their life and, 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 and feeling transformed through the process. I do not believe that uh, therapy alone transforms people. I think a conjunct care plan that involves some sort of coaching before the person leaves is, is really where the transformation is going to occur. I believe a Band-Aid is given in therapy. I believe a crisis is overcome in therapy. And I believe that if the person has enough self-efficacy already to take that ball and run with it, they will end up coaching themselves through uh, a transformation through that process, such as let's say somebody is healed from cancer, you know, things like that. That's usually a, a life-changing event that, that forces them to see their, their life in a different way, to see a different perspective on things that they were doing every day. Not everybody's sitting in that life-threatening situation or feels they're in that life-threatening situation. So I think that the people who want to give people transformational experiences will feel that they hit a glass ceiling if they only stay with therapy skills. So let's look at it from the business point of view. Mm -hmm. We're all in business, you know, in some, some form or another, if we're therapists or yoga teachers. I think you said something about earlier that really the therapeutic mode is quite crowded and that making your mark in that can be difficult is doing making this transformation to coaching or adding coaching to your mm -hmm. skill set. Is that helping you in a business way also? Well, yes, of course, because you're, 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 everybody's selling something. Even if you're giving a free class, you're selling, you want people to come. Well, that's the first thing we have to understand that spirituality and altruistic and everything like that, you're still selling something if you want people to partake in something that you want to share. What is helpful for me in terms of a, a business standpoint is now I have more to share at different places to move them through an experience, uh, the whole picture experience, the whole, like I said, the whole transformation. What we are offering people, or what at least what I am, I don't, I don't sell yoga sessions. I don't sell physical therapy sessions. I don't sell 
dry needling or massages or, or, or any of these yoga classes. What I sell people is outcomes. And I honestly feel I have more to sell. I have a better product. I have a better, I have a higher value thing in the market when I can offer the person who wants a transformation, a transformational experience. If someone just wants a therapeutic experience, in my case, I can give them that too. I can match, I can, I can deliver what they're expecting. I can have a conversation. One of the, one of the real things about coaching skills is that you basically what they are is, is, is convers is communication skills. You are getting very ninja styled uh, level ability in communication. And so of course, you know, 99% 99% of, of business is relationship. And you're going to have a much better relationship with people that you can communicate with. And, and it's not just that you're telling them what you do. It's that you're talking to them with who they are. So you understand who they are. I mean, my certification is teaching, you know, my work that I do on psychometrics is teaching behave, literal, literal objectives on people's behavioral styles and their main core motivators, their highest motivators. What's behind? What's under the, the iceberg of complaints that you see? That's either holding them back from healing their, themselves or once they've healed their, you know, boo-boo keeps them actually doing the whole full work to not end up in that position again. Uh, that's very valuable in a society that is literally killing themselves. That's a strong statement. <laughs> they are. I mean, that's, it's, it's the truth. We have, we, our, our things that are killing us now are not opportunistic infections and all these complaints about vaccinations and all of this. That's not what killing, is killing human beings. If you look at the top three killers, it's, it's what we're putting in our mouth, what's coming out of our mouth and our thinking patterns, it's stress. And, and that is self-imposed by our perceptions. That needs a transformation of, per, of self-perception, per, not just, you know, eat this and exercise this many minutes and move this way. Okay, but yoga, and, and I'm not a yoga therapist, so I, but I'm sure, because <laughs> I've talked to a lot of them. <laughs> I mm-hmm. mean, they're talking about the, the koshas and, and going deep within, um, beyond the physical into the mental, emotional, the spiritual, etc. What... Why is that not transformational? That is transformational, but not everybody wants to be on a yoga mat. And I'm just saying that from a business standpoint, not everybody's going to buy yoga. But that doesn't mean that if you're a yoga therapist, you need to not see them. You just have to have it in a different package of what you're going to do and work with them. And coaching is an outlet for that. I see. For example, I can I can do my I can make money. uh, I I make money on the internet. I could be I could be working with somebody over in Germany, and I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina, in America. I can't do that in a traditional, maybe you know, therapy way. Although there is telemedicine, but again, I'm not always selling. You have to feel broken to work with me. I actually would. I actually have a majority of my conversation is, I'm going to work with you so that you don't break. Something I would like to get into because um, I have talked to a lot of yoga therapists and there seems to be a trend that they want to be in the medical realm, shall we say. They want to work mm-hmm. in, with, cl- with doctors. They want to work in clinics. They want to work in hospitals. Not everyone by any means, of course, but they are trying to make a statement that they are an excellent partner to these other more traditional medical services. I kind of got the impression that maybe you weren't thinking that's a great idea (laughs) or that you have some opinion on it. (laughs) Yeah. Well, we have to understand I'm, I'm of the mindset again, as a businesswoman (laughs) who's been doing this for 15, you know, years or so, I wasn't able to build the business I wanted in terms of my vision being under the thumb of a corporation, which is what most hospitals are right now. There's certain rules and there's certain procedures. And, and I think a lot of that catalyst of wanting to do that is number one, everybody wants to be respected. And it's very prestigious and respectful, you know, putting on that white coat and, 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 and working with doctors and nurses and, and therapists and things like that. 
my concern is that they're looking at it as the silver lining of, of, of self-validation that actually is going to, the, what they don't realize is that right now, uh, medicine is, is, is very, hospital centers make money off of getting staff who can do certain things for less money. And they're also into, and as, as much as we want to help, and we can, I 100% agree that we are a great, as, as yoga therapists with that yoga therapy hat on, it's a great complement to physical therapy. That's why I started to combine it. It's a great complement for uh, someone who's, you know, in digest, you know, having major digestive problems and they're, you know, they really need to vagal down train and we have this way or, or somebody sitting in a bed disabled to, you know, work on breath and self-perception and, and that be very transformational for them, help build, you know, we have research taking them out of depression and this and that without all the consequences of, of pharmacology induced uh, support. So that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is I'm not so sure we're in a position uh, of the people because of, of the difficulty historically I've seen in just caregivers, in any, any profession that has a predominance of women, in, in, in any uh, altruistic type of really heart-led, mission-driven type of people, they tend to be taken advantage of. And there are people taking advantage of them right now who are billing under their codes, basically bringing them into their centers so that they can get more money, but they're not, you know, and, but they don't have to pay a physical therapist. So they'll pay a yoga therapist. It's not that they necessarily believe it's just that they honestly don't respect either of them enough to think that there's a difference. So there, the, the theory is there, and it's, it's very good, but we have to be very careful that we're asking for what our value truly is, and not just replacing the fact. I mean, I got to tell you, physical therapists right now, if you're on acute care, you're not even a billable service. You're getting people out of the hospital and moved out into the next thing, but you're kind of like in this whole overall payment system, at least here in America, where you know, as far as physicians and everybody's, as far as corporate is concerned, acute care physical therapists, they're not getting, you know, they're just rolled into the whole thing. They're not seeing you as your own valuable service. So, you know, when price, when, when things that get to need to get cut, they're going to look at what's going to bring them the revenue. And I don't know if we're there yet in the brand of, of our profession to go into it showing and really saying, look, this is the line. This is my value. I'm bringing you instead of going in and being like, Oh, you know, I'm, I'm so excited. I'm doing you such a favor. It, it, it's just a mind shift thing that I think we have to be very careful of. My, my thing is why don't you go build your own business? And if they really value you and you market well, then they should be by, by ethics sending people to you and you can get paid way more. Because you have no ceiling in your own business. That's my thought. Well, I think it's good because I think looking at it from someone who's worked through this system in a slightly different position is good rather than just kind of taking on wholeheartedly, oh, this is going to be really good for me and I will be validated if I get to work with doctors and in hospitals and stuff. Yeah, we so. just have to check and we have to practice what we preach, right? We have to make sure that if we're going in there, we're not going in there in that sort of wounded wounded healer model and and needing that we go in there because we are changing healthcare and we have to be in a position of power to do that and then the first thing would be in our own salaries and in our own value ladder that we're getting presentations and you know i'm hearing people are like you know they want a licensure and this and that and i'm just saying that that's just you know political hands being held because there's so much I can't do because I'm licensed and I have to play this game of, you know, walking this line that I have. It, it, literally, I would be able to do so much more online and whatnot if I gave up my doctor of physical therapy. There's two sides to that. I had a discussion with somebody else about the other side of that, which is if you aren't licensed, then you can be destroyed. <laughs> I, you can always run your own business, obviously, as long as you're within those kinds of guidelines, but it does become more difficult if you want to be within the medical group. Yes, but you have to, un you have to understand what that's about. It's yes. because they can't 
make as much money off of you unless you are a licensed provider. They could still respect you. It's just that they, and their liability goes up. If you're not um, licensed. If you're not licensed. Okay. It's not because they don't necessarily believe in you because honestly, I, I mean, I, I just, I have to be honest here. If, if there were very few physicians that will truly be understanding your education, they just don't necessarily always, and it's not every physician. I'm going to say that, you know, I've been in that world and it does not matter that I'm a doctor of physical therapy. I, the American Medical Association is constantly fighting the American Physical Therapy Association about direct access because when it comes down to it, it's, it's, we can take money away from them. If you don't need to see a physician and you just walk into a physical therapy office, nine times out of 10 when you have a pain, it's not about cancer. And we actually have the skills to make sure that if it looks like cancer, we send them to you, but it's who's getting the money. We do need standards. We do need some sort of regulation because everybody's, you know, everybody and their mother's taking a weekend course on yoga for back pain and deciding they're a yoga huh. therapist. And you're not. We have to be careful of why we're getting a licensure and what that will entail. Thank you, Lise. I was pretty sure this was going to be a really great <laughs> discussion, and it has been, because I think you're just saying, hey, stop and think about where you want to go and what you want to do, because you may be been, selling, been sold a, a bill of goods that's not great, because it sounds good. It sounds like what, that you'll be respected and that you'll work with clients, which is what everybody wants to do. Th these are helping professions. but. Um, I just thought, I just, I love the way you think about it because you have all this experience behind you. And I think it's important at this point where our, there seems to be this rush towards being part of the medical system that maybe we need to think about it or it's not me. I, I do podcasting, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's, it's, if, if you're thinking that way, then, then, you know, you might want to. There's, there's a reason that there's so many medpreneurs now that there's so many masterminds, that there's so many cash-based PT practices and rehab centers and, and functional medicine doctors. I mean, we literally have a whole new profession of functional medicine, a new philosophy. And most of those people are not taking insurance and most of those people have left the allopathic confines, not totally. I mean, they're still practicing you know, medicine, they're probably, but they, they, they've tried to make a path where they could give the care that they believe needs to be given in the way that it's being given, it's the way it can be given. And we just need to look at that. That's all I'm saying is you just need to see the whole picture. I think, I think yoga therapists should really seriously consider being more along the lines of the functional medicine conversation than the allopathic medicine conversation. And they should alliance themselves with functional medicine doctors because those guys get it. Functional, I mean, I'm a functional, you know, physical therapist or focused physical therapist. That's, that's all those health coaches. They're all functional medicine. None of them are sitting in there. Those are the registered dietitians that are still sitting there talking about proteins, you know, fats and carbohydrates and, and giving you a formula like that. That's not going to heal you. The functional medicine people are the, are the health coaches and, and functional medicine docs and fun, functional medicine therapists and, and all of that. That's where I think people who are serious about being significant and maybe having some power in how they make their money as well as how they're impacting the world need to go where medicine's going and it's going towards functional medicine. Okay, give me a quick definition of functional medicine. Just so functional. Yeah. Functional medicine is honestly, it's to be perfectly honest, it's the uh, medical doctors who saw what the naturopaths were doing in the Ayurvedics and life, lifestyle medicine. It's the approach of lifestyle uh -huh. medicine. It's just that it, you have a, um, it's open. What's nice about functional medicine is it's not uh, profession specific. So you don't have to be an MD. There's, there's DCs and PTs and, and RNs and whatever. It's a philosophy. 
So it's, 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 it's a blanket philosophy, which is focused on lifestyle medicine and all the contributing factors into why your body is out of function. It doesn't necessarily wait until you're in a diagnostic disease. So if they take blood work, let's say your vitality is down, they're going to look at a much broader screen of your thyroid and your metabolism and all of this stuff than maybe a traditional allopathic medicine person would because they're just looking at your numbers to see when you've crossed the line and you're officially able to be diagnosed with disease. Functional medicine is going to say, why aren't you feeling well? Let's look at the whole picture and let's do a broader scope and see if your T3 is converting to your T, you know, your T4 is converting to your T3 properly and where this might be an issue. And a lot of times, like I said, it ends up being a lot of um, inner, inner inflammation with chronic disease. Like I said, what, what is killing us now is, is, is chronic stuff that we have a lot of power over by how we eat, how we drink, how we sleep. And, um, but the one area it doesn't do so well is actually coaching you through that process of, of change. And so they brought in the health coaches to do some of that, mm -hmm. um, that work. Well, this has been a great podcast, Lisa. Um, I want to give your contact details. Uh, Lisa's website is www.bellyguru.com. You can email Elisa at bellyguru.com. I don't know why I can't say that. <laughs> the, is that also your Instagram and, and Facebook? Yeah, actually, um, if, if you're interested more on the professional side, probably the best way to get me is my, my other, my, my personal website, uh, which is uh, www.drlisahollandpt.com. And that also is my handle over on Instagram. Um, and you can find me over on Facebook with that as well. So, um, okay, great. I'll yeah, all that in the, in the show notes. Okay. Okay. So thank you, Lisa. I'm really, I always like talking to you. You always have such yeah, strong like opinions. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm an evolutionary woman. What can I say? I'm an alpha. I'm the new oh, alpha. You're alpha. <laughs> yeah, okay. So. Great. <laughs> Thanks so much. And, uh, as usual, you've you've produced a great podcast. <laughs> Thank you so much, Stephanie, for having me on and for having this conversation for everyone. Uh Thank you for that wonderful interview. If you would like to be a guest on Changing the Face of Yoga, please go to my website, www.yogalightness.com.au and under the Changing the Face of Yoga tab, you can complete Be Our Guest form. After reviewing the form and finding it applicable to this podcast, we will send you a link to schedule an interview. Please download, review, and tell your friends of any podcasts that are of interest to you and to them. If you would like to contact me, send an email to info at yogalightness.com.au. And thank you for listening to Changing the Face of Yoga.